We are a powerful people. We are the people of the Lord. Amen. We need to get into the word, all right? So we're going to open the Bibles to John 21. But while you're doing that, I just wanted to give you some good news about Haiti. I don't know if, uh, how many people knew that I actually went to Haiti last week. I went for four days. I was going to speak about that, Pastor, but then, but, but then I wanted a, a brother of you to be here also. So we're going to wait for that to happen. But if you want more information uh, on, the, on my Facebook and also the church Facebook, there's a video out already that I put out, and there's pictures. If you're watching online, we'll probably link some, uh, some pictures on there as well. Let's go into the Bible, okay? That's, that's where we're here, right? Amen. Amen. So in John 21, I'm going to give you just a little prelude of this, okay? Um, Jesus has left. But he, he had died. He had resurrected. He had already presented himself to the disciples several times. But the disciples, they were still, they didn't know what to do. So they just went back to their old lives. And that's where we pick up in 21, 3. Well, right before that, it says two others of the disciples were all together. So there were several of them that were together. And Simon Peter said to them, I'm going fishing. I'm going fishing. They said to him, we're going with you also. They went out and immediately got into the boat, and that night they caught nothing. But when the morning had come, Jesus stood on the shore, yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Then Jesus said unto them, children, have you any food? They answered to him, no. And he said to them, cast the nets to the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they cast, and now they were, able, were not able to draw, to draw it because of the multitude of fish. Therefore... That disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, Peter, it is the Lord. Amen. You guys can be seated. We'll leave it there. But so here, here's the thing. In, in, in the last couple of uh, months, I've started to delve into to media and creating a story. And the storylines has been from the beginning of mankind, even before writing, stories have been part of our humankind. Telling stories. And, and, and that's the essence of like our humanity. Is it, began, it began because of stories. So I have been trying to emulate this, okay? Like in, in the case of Haiti, going and trying to present to the church what's going on in Haiti. And by the way, Haiti, Brother View's doing an awesome job. He's doing an awesome job. I'm telling you, I wish I could talk more about that tonight. Maybe I should have, but he's doing a, such a great job. And for everybody who's donated and put some effort, doing a great job. But my, my specific mission in, that, in this last week was to go record and then now change it, or not change it, but edit it and present the story. And it's, it's difficult. It's not an easy task to do. But humankind has been doing it for, for a long time. Now, there's two kinds of people. There's the people who like fiction. That means they're not real, like stories that are not real. And people who like nonfiction, people who like, like stories that are true. I don't know where, where, you, where you fall into that category. Let me see. My, my fiction people, who likes fiction books? Those are books that are not real, like, you know, made up stories. Those, I mean, they're good. They're good. Where are my nonfiction people? Raise your hand. That's, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that, truthfully, I fall into that category also. But here's the thing. It doesn't matter where you fall in the category, with which category. It's still, it's still storytelling. And you still have to present the idea of what's going on in the story. Okay, and actually, I think the documentary is probably even harder because you have to specifically capture the correct moment and present the truth versus the fiction. It doesn't matter. Just make it up as you go along. All right. So that's that's the focus that, that I've been kind of delving into. And, and here's the thing. Here's the thing in movies. I don't know if you guys notice in movies In movies, ordinary things don't happen in movies. I don't know if you if you kind of notice that, Like for example, if two characters are talking, um, they might be eating. Right. And talking at the same time, but that progresses the storyline. However, there could be another movie where the character is in the movie, the movie time, a month, and you never see the character eat, right? Because eating is not a priority in the story. Like, that's not a part of the story. Or, or you never see, from now on, check this out, if you, when they're talking on the phone, they're like, hello, 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 how you doing? Okay, they never say bye. They never say bye in the movies. They just hang, hang up. I, got, I mean, if we did that, if we did that in real life, we, I mean, that's not, if you say, hey, okay, I'll see you later, bye, I'll call you, you know, I'll see you, and you hang up. But in the movies, check it out from now on, they just, they just hang up. Yeah, it, it just, it's just weird because that doesn't progress the storyline, okay? It just doesn't progress it. 
So, so here's the thing. We, you and I, have been, even from the beginning of mankind, we have been, been kind of, I don't want to say brainwashed, but just used to, used to, like, extraordinary things happening. In the movie, they're only going to present to you the extraordinary things. And the ordinary things that we do don't happen in the movie. For example, tonight, after, after service, you know, some, some people might have to iron their clothes, you know, uh, for tomorrow. Or maybe fix, prepare meals for the week. I mean, if you're smart, you probably did it before. But if you're doing awesome things, you know, it's Saturday and Sunday, you know, coming to church, you, don't, you didn't have time until, not, until now. Or if you're a teacher, uh, lesson planning, right? My teacher say amen. amen. Right? Lesson planning right now after church. So that happens. But guess what? That's not, I mean, that's very ordinary, you know. That's like, who's going who's gonna to talk about that? That's kind of very, doesn't happen. But here's, here's the thing. Going back to the, going back to the story, right? Uh, uh, Peter, he goes fishing, and for them, that's like the most ordinary thing they could do. That's, that's something, they're, they're, they're fishermen. I mean, that's the most ordinary thing that they could have done. So to them, going fishing was just nothing. However, something starts to change. Something starts to change. Why? Because Jesus had another plan. Jesus had the plan to present himself, himself to them, but yet they didn't know that yet. They were doing the most ordinary thing that they could have done, and yet Jesus had another plan. And in one moment's notice, in one step, in one, in one change, in, in one knee, right, Brother Cole? In one knee, in one moment, just in one slip of the moment, Jesus comes out. And, and then John the apostle says, Peter, look, the Lord, it's the Lord. The moment just changed just like that. It became from an ordinary ordinary moment of fishing to the extraordinary moments to the extraordinary of doing something great of being in a great moment now tonight tonight when you're thinking about oh man it's Sunday night man tomorrow I have to go to work no it's the opposite tomorrow I get to go to work I get to do my ordinary thing yes it's, it's probably the most ordinary thing that can happen just iron your clothes but if you're doing it in the name of Jesus something great can happen Something great, something great will happen. Something great will happen. If, if, if you have to do lesson plan tomorrow, I'm going to affect those kids in a positive way. And you're going to do it. It's going to happen in a, in, a, in a great way. Maybe you're doing dishes and, 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 and somebody calls you, right? And it's a friend that calls you and says, hey, listen, I know, I know that, that, that you're a Christian. I know you go to church and, and I'm, I'm having this issue. We don't know what's going to happen. We don't know how God is working things behind the screen, behind the movie. We don't know, but we're prepared. We're prepared in that ordinary moment to just in one step, in one swoop of a, of, of, of a, of a moment to, to change over into that extraordinary moment. And that's just how it is. That's how it is. That's how we have to prepare. Now, I digress a little bit. Here's the other thing. And, and social media, that's the other thing. All right? I'm going to treat you a little bit, okay? So here's the thing. Sometimes we see social media and all, the, all these extraordinary things that people are doing, right? And you're like, oh, how come I'm not doing extraordinary things? Those are just little moments. Like, I'll give you an example. And, and babe, no, I don't want more kids, but, but, but this is what's been happening to me. Every time I open Facebook, I see somebody else having a baby. Like, I don't know if that happens to you, but I see another gender reveal party. I'm like, I want to have a, not a baby, but hey, what? no, no, no. <laughs> but, but I'm just saying, I, just, I keep seeing that. I'm like, hey, that's not happening to me, you know. So, so those little things, just keep that in mind that, that people, all of us are having many, many ordinary moments. Many ordinary moments, but God can move in the extraordinary. God moves, moves you into that extraordinary moment. I'll give you, I'll, 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 I had other characters in the Bible to, to, to talk about, but, I, but I'll, I'll build on, on Brother Coates. If you, if you think of Samson, all those moments, all those moments that, 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 he, that he fell, he, there was moments that he, nobody knew him, by the way. There was moments in his life where he was in jail for years and years where his eyes got gouged out. And then, in one swoop of a moment, he moved into the ordinary, into being a slave, being a worker. He moved into that extraordinary spot just because he felt a, a conviction, a difference in his life. So here's the thing. Here's what we need to do. We need to move into that extraordinary, extraordinary moment. Invite Jesus. Say, Jesus, this is the moment where I'm going to move in from the ordinary into the extraordinary. And, and you know what? You don't even need to wait for Jesus to come to you. I mean, he will. He will come to you. But you, you can make that step forward. You can make that step. We can make that step forward and say, 
I'm coming to you, Jesus. Be like Peter in the boat. And it said, if Jesus, if that's you, I'm coming to you, Jesus. I'm coming to you. And like that, we can say, hey, Peter, look, it's the Lord. And move from an ordinary moment into an extraordinary moment. In the name of Jesus.